when I, I shoot like crap. I mean, it just, I just. It's the buzzer. Yeah. As soon as that buzzer goes off, every. But that's why you have to build the fundamentals into your subconscious so your conscious mind thinks about the task at hand. Yeah. I don't have to think about how to reload, trigger press, when I disengage. Right. That's all been programmed in under that subconscious. Right. So you're more of the Zen shooter? No. no Please tell me you are. No. Please tell me you are. No, no he's Make, on. There's got to be someone Make out there up. that is. Who's, who's, who's on, on, when you guys go to matches, who's the most kind of Zen worthy? You know who gets, who used to, Scotty Warren. I don't know him as well. He, he he's like that. I mean, you, I swear at night when he's sleeping, he's levitating. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because, because I know in like the f like fishing, like it's it's a whole zen thing. Yeah. All right. Hey, Gun Talk Live presented by Palmetto State Armory. We're here with the Colt team, Mark Reddle and Maggie Reese. And if Maggie doesn't talk much, she's not shy. She's losing her voice on the second day of Shot Show. I, that's a horrible. So we're going to let her take over the interview now. Go, go for it. And, like, and I'll, I'll just let you lead. I'll, I'll just be waving to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when did you guys get in? You guys got in we, Saturday? We, Saturday. We, we actually re to get in and beat the snow from the northeast. Okay. So all right. we've been here since and Saturday. You guys were out on range day shooting all the new guns and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, what? Any buzz around the SHOT Show that you guys are hearing on, you know, what's new, what you guys are excited to see um, from anybody? We don't oh, have man. our own booth. Man. <laughs> I think, wow. I think one, <laughs> of, one of the areas I've been seeing a lot of things is the ammunition companies are, are I hate to say, you know, coming into that 21st century. They're really yep. looking at bullet design. Um, the 6.5 is really taking the precision rifle era by storm. So we're really getting some great, accurate, long-range rifles, but it's trickling down to the handgun right. range with a lot of handgun rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can go out by a box of 9mm today that out of the right gun shoots great groups. We don't right. have to hand load like we used mm -hmm. to to get that round that's perfect yeah. for our gun. Yeah, that's very and that's been a, a, that's been a transition over the last two or three years, I think. I think ammo is just hitting a – they kind of hit a plateau, and now there are, they're starting to rise. And one thing that I've noticed around SHOT Show, and there's a lot of buzz around, is lever action guns. Have you guys I've, – I've been seeing more lever actions, and maybe that's just the a trend maybe? I don't Not know. Not even just lever action, but – customized lever actions, right. you know, tactical lever actions. But don't forget, a lever action, I can take it just about any place in the country without a problem That's true. Today. That's a good point. Or a black rifle, I can't. You know, it's like the old uh, pump shotgun. Uh, I used to call them a trunk gun. I could put it in my trunk and go wherever I had to go and have yeah. a shotgun. Absolutely. Yeah. So. so that's one thing that I've noticed uh, being in this booth. Um, and we don't get to walk around much around the show. You guys basically go from the hotel to your booth, or is that, I mean, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, uh, it's like I told my wife, we become vampires. We don't see the sun when we're in here. That's <laughs> right. I mean, we've got some windows, a bank of windows here, but in large part, you guys go in when the sun's starting to come up, and you go out when it's already down. Yep. So, all right, where's the one place that you have to go when you're in Vegas? Bed. <laughs> At the end of the day, <laughs> sleep. No, <laughs> good no. Rest. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? I'm pretty much the, in the same boat. The same boat. Same yeah. boat. Well, I'm gonna go look for a Starbucks and get a honey with a tea. Yeah. That oh, is my yeah. goal. Right, okay, uh, can we get one of our editors on that? Can you guys go grab, <laughs> grab her a honey tea? <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> but no. So new guns from Colt. Like yesterday, we saw the King Cobra. Mm -hmm. And what are we looking at today? Years ago, matter of fact, I've, I've been. This is my tenth year shooting for Colt. My very first match gun was a Combat Elite. It kind of has a cult following, is the best way to right. put it. It's one that everybody wants. We discontinued it a couple years ago. We've listened to the customers; they love that particular model. So we brought it back, but we brought it back with a lot of improvements over right. the old one. Um, so we've done also done it in a family of guns. So you have a okay. family of guns with all the same features in a government model, a commander model, and a defender model. Okay. And what were you guys shooting out at the range? Because I know the line was so packed, I didn't get a chance to get up there. I mean, just like shooting the King yeah. Cobra, mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to do it. We had great response from all our guns. We had the commander and the government model of the, the combat elite out there. And what's great about it, 
we've taken what our customers have been telling us and we're looking at a lot of the custom guns and trying to bring a lot of those features at a production gun right. price. So we've taken a stainless steel gun. Right. We put 25 lines per inch checkery on the front strap, the mainspring housing done a full bevel magwell, night sights front and rear, and there's right. Novak cut, true Novak rear sight, you know, sights right. on it, and ambi safety. But we've taken that stainless gun and we put black iron bond on, which is one of the best finishes in the world because okay. it actually bonds with the metal. And then we polished the sides back to stainless steel. So all the rounds are still that satin black, but the sides really? are polished stainless steel. So it gives it a great two-tone yep. look. And that's kind of what we're looking at here a little bit, right? Yep. If you see, you can see you got this, this, all the flats are stainless, but they're all the rounds have that black still on it. That's sharp. It's a pretty gun. It, it, it really is. It's, it's a, a pretty gun. gun. Well, it's a pretty like, gun, but. But it's a shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it's a shooter. You know, I mean. We had both of them out there in 45, and, you know, for years there was such a, an interest in 9, and I think a lot of people maybe might be circling around again and, and being happy to shoot the 45. It got great response. It's so soft shooting. Well, they, uh, the dual the recoil spring mm -hmm. helps in that aspect. Okay, all right. Um, what else, I mean, how much input does Colt put on you guys um, when a gun like this is being developed? I mean, what, what is your guys' role in coming out with these? You have to tell them, first of all, how many rounds did you put through your original gun? I finally <laughs> retired. <laughs> but this I, is so great. I love I this. I retired mm -hmm. my gun actually probably five years after I got it, and there's 185,000 rounds through my Combat Elite. The really? only thing I mm -hmm. changed in, I broke an extractor. I actually shot the barrel out to be a smoothbore, took the rifling right out, but had, at 125,000 rounds, I had to rebarrel the gun. Really? But as far as the hammer, the internals, yeah. they're, they're still the ones that I got when that gun was built in that gun. Really? Yep. So he's, he's put some yeah. rounds yeah. through it to come <laughs> back with the feedback. Yep. <laughs> um, Maggie, we, we, we get a lot of feedback from Maggie, uh, and don't take this the wrong right. way, from the female aspect mm -hmm. of shooting, well, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. the nine millimeters. Maggie is very particular in her match guns, and we take a lot of what she says and, and try to bring it over to right. production guns because she's telling us from that, that woman's point of view what features she likes, right. and a lot of women are in the same boat. Mm -hmm. I work at a cult full time, and so I have a lot of input and a lot of test fire on the guns, and... You know, at Colt, nobody puts a rounds through a gun right. like Maggie and myself. Now, no, we're huh. fortunate that Paul Spitali, our senior VP, shoots, and he right. shoots a yeah. lot. Yeah. So if I have an idea, him and I will go to range and, and actually put it through the paces. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now we actually actually have a question on here, which I think is a kind of funny question. Is Colt getting into the polymer pistol game anytime soon? <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I, I wasn't going to. Let gonna, me put it I was this way. We are looking at a lot of right. diversity. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say 100% yes. I'm not going to say 100% no. Stay tuned. We've come out. We've listened to our customers, and we're doing a lot. That's why we got back in the revolver game. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and that's that's one thing that I think Colt does a really good job is, is you know, some companies kind of slough off um, and take for granted the customer comments, the shooters. You know, the guys out there that are shooting. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Colt does a great job on understanding what guys want. Yep. So. And girls. Well, yeah. Thank I mean, guys you. like Thank everyone. You. <laughs> like every folks. Shooters. Yeah, <laughs> shooters. It's all shooters. Um, now, you had an interesting idea that you used to do, and you're thinking about bringing it back um, with training. Let's talk a little bit about more training um, and training for matches. Um, now, you're – take these guys through – a match, right? right. Yeah, and and yeah. show them your stages. Correct. Uh, major, a few years ago when I was shooting for uh, another a company right. as well as Colt, we used to go to a major match, specifically IDP. We started it. Right. And we would shoot the match along with everybody else. And it was a sign, out, sign up sheet. So anybody who shot the match could come back the following day. And our team shooters, we would have, you know, four or five of us stay. Bob Vogel was one, right. myself, Dave Harrington, uh, Tom Campbell. And we would each pick a stage that we thought was a good technical stage right. that people or could give people a hard time. We break the group up and we would walk them through and say, this is how we shot this stage and why. Really? This is how we would train for this type of a stage. These are the things that we have to learn how to do, certain right. skill set. 
and then we would have them run through. We would critique them afterwards, and I, I can't remember a time where somebody shot it worse, but most of them have a dramatic <laughs> decrease. That would in be time. me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be looking at butterflies or dandelions <laughs> or something. <Yeah. laughs> But it, it's really interesting to come back, though, and see what your full potential is on the stage right. when you're not fighting match nerves and, and everything else right. going yep. on. And so it gives you something to aspire to and, yeah. and really work towards. Well, because you guys run these stages. I mean, you guys are training for those stages, and you're training, you know, your moves and your lateral movements and all that good right. stuff. And, and it's just a different mindset. And we were kind of talking about it uh, pregame. And – it, shooting is a mindset sport, and a lot of people don't understand that. It's not going out and pulling a trigger. Yeah, I would say it's probably about 80%. Uh, once you learn the skill set, yeah. then it's all your mind game. Right. Now, Maggie, uh, I'm sure, you know, she approaches her training maybe a little different than mine. I don't do big stages in training because right. even if you take a 32-round stage, it's basically these little training segments that I do that we're stringing together. Okay. You so you're breaking it down different. You don't need these huge stages. Right. Now, how do you learn? And everybody wants to do practice what they can do good. Right. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't of get better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how do you? So what I do after a match is I'll actually take each stage, and I'll see where I ended up in that particular stage. Mm -hmm. And if I'm way down, say, whoa, what did, what did that stage have in it? That right. I lost so much time, and that's what i got to practice to uh -huh. get better at it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a question. Uh, the Colt Combat Elites available in nine? Yes. Okay. So there you go. And that was uh, from uh, Jared. So um, getting back to guns and what you guys are looking for um, in your match guns, let's talk about a little bit more about your match guns. And, and can a guy go on, buy this gun, and compete with it out of the, out of the box? Yes. Yes? That's yes. why you designed them that way, right? Yeah. Um, the only thing I change on a gun is a perfect. A personal comfort zone is the best way. Yeah. I want yeah. it to feel a certain way in my right. hands, right. so I use a certain. Gr I use the same grips on all my guns because after a hundred, a thousand okay. of times you have it in your hand, a grip change can change the way that gun sits in my hand. The grip safety, the thumb. Um, our national match barrel, I would probably yeah. match against just about anybody's match barrel on oh, yeah. on a road mm -hmm. today. Um, my match gun that I use is just basically one that I take. Out of finished goods, yep. and I'll clean it clean it up, maybe take sharp edges right. off, and I run it. I don't. Mm -hmm. Really? You don't change a lot? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. Are you changing a lot? Or are you just, is it a feel thing for you too? It is, it is, and it's having the repeatability so that as you go from gun to gun, it always feels the same way. So right. some, you know, minor features right. like the grips and things like that you That's always want to. And there are some specific rules depending on the competition that you're going to shoot. Right. You know, so you might have some differences between USBSA and IPSC and IDPA. And right. so you kind of get. Weights and. Right. Yeah. Okay. Type of barrel. Yeah. yeah. That's great stuff. Um, you guys, I am monitoring comments. So if you have a few more questions, we're almost wrapping this up but get them in and we'll talk about it where are you guys off to next well the season for me kind of really starts up in march so okay. um february will be training for me and some time at home and and just kind of refamiliarizing myself after after the winter break yeah. <laughs> getting your voice back <laughs> yes <hopefully. laughs> actually with with me working for cult full-time this is kind of the start of our sh show season so from here we go to the great american outdoor show uh, February is my first match. I shoot the Florida Open down in Frostproof, Florida. But in between all that, I'm the law enforcement division manager at Colt, so I do a lot of live fire demos for law enforcement that want to see our guns, okay. if they're going to change guns, new features that we're putting on. So you're always on the road, basically. That, yeah, <laughs> as I tell people, that's why I'm still married. Uh, my wife doesn't have me around. <laughs> uh, I got a question on here. We'll just, what's your favorite competition venue? Uh, or competition slash venue. Mm -hmm. Gosh, uh, venue. We're here in Vegas, and I really actually love the matches out really? here in Vegas. There's a good community out here. Um, there's a guy. His name is Pete Rensing. He um, has his own um, series of matches now. Right. You can check it out and call it. Okay. It's called iScope. But he just puts on some really great stages. Right. So. Yeah, just all the USPSA matches that mm -hmm. I shoot. The levels have all gone up. The area matches in USPSA, there's eight areas, right. different mm -hmm. areas, but they're getting to be more competitive sometimes and even more 
crowded right. than the Nationals. Really? Like, if you're going to sign up for Area 6 in March, that sign-up started in December. It filled before January, and that's 450 shooters. Good so night. Yeah. yeah. So you got to st stay on top of it to yeah. get into them, and they're, they're getting very good. Right. Uh, I prefer, if you, you're talking about a, a specific, I like technical matches. I, I like yeah. ones where you have tight shots, hard right. shots. That I'm better at that than just right. that running gun hose type stage well i think it's more interesting too we we like getting into the props and the swingers and the movers yeah. and clamshells yep. and all that stuff it kind of really makes each that stage different yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, no stage is the same yeah i mean right. that's that, that's the beauty of what we do um and now uh oh we got some works coming in <laughs> oh they're, they're saying injuries. so what's the best way for someone to get into competitions and shooting what what, what advice would you give them I've been approached by a lot of people about it. Um, first, USPSA, IDPA have great websites mm -hmm. and look to see local matches, what clubs are doing local matches. Right. And I would recommend going to watch a couple of them first. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes these local clubs have little leagues. My local club, we started a league on Tuesday nights right. where you can, you can come. We set up an IDPA stage. And for like five dollars, you shoot it three times. We just yeah. change it here and there. But here's a real oh, low great. pressure. You got people there that can. Now you see what everybody's using yeah. for gear. You can see if your gear is going to work right. before you go to a match. Because <laughs> there's a lot of guys. Oh, this holster isn't working for right. your mag pouch. So coming slow, but with production today, single stack, you can get in without having to buy that. $3,500 open gun. Right. Come in with a production <laughs> gun and do quite well. Yeah. Yeah. The local clubs will often have a new shooter squad as well, so you okay. can kind of get geared up with people who are on the same yeah. speed as you and, and progress. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. I think, uh, oh, we do have one. Any 22s in the future? The 22 pistol that w is available for a Colt, we have Walther Euromax builds for us, so it's the same okay. size as our, but it's a true 22 pistol. Right. I have one. They work really good. I've used it for a lot of steel matches in 22. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, and the last question we're going to get to is how many rounds does the 45 hold, and how many rounds does the nine hold? Okay. The 45 is eight plus one. Okay. Uh, the nine millimeter we send nine round magazines there are 10 round magazines available okay. aftermarket there's another huge advance that i think in the marketplace there, there's plenty of companies out there making a really reliable 10 round nine millimeter yeah. magazine <laughs> oh that's great that's great for you guys especially on the range but this is colt i'm kj you're watching gun talk live presented by palmetto state armory